Hey, what's up, bro? How's things going? I appreciate you joining me again. Been a long time, no talk. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Yeah, it's been a while. Appreciate you having me back on and uh, doing all right, man. Hoping to get back to training soon. Uh, just been enjoying life with uh, a little time off from training with small injuries that we're repairing and uh, I'm ready to get back in there. Yeah, definitely, man. I definitely wanted to see you back in there, but like, what kind of injuries are we talking about here? How serious are they? Uh, thank goodness I had no surgery. Um, I tore my, I have a light tear in my MCL and a partial tear in a word I cannot pronounce. And, uh, I was supposed to get stem cell injections. And then when I got there to get stem cell injections, they suggested they wanted me to do more physical therapy and wear a knee brace instead of doing stem cell injections. So then that kind of pushed recovery a little longer. And, uh, now we're in our second part of physical therapy. I got about three weeks left of that, and then hopefully I'll be cleared to go back to training, and it'd be nice to get back in there in December. Damn, so did this happen during, like, training, or did it happen during your last fight with Nate Madness? Uh, it was in the fight with Nate. Uh, it was actually early round one. Uh, if you watch the fight, like, I go to kick – and when I go to kick, he actually moves. And so instead of like going all the way through with the kick and like spinning around, I kind of like stopped it mid kick and I bring it back and uh, I kind of have a reaction there, but I kind of like smile it off instead of like letting him know like it kind of affected me. But uh, I knew I did something. I didn't know how bad it was, but with all the adrenaline and everything, like I didn't worry about it until after the fight, obviously. Yeah, it didn't seem like it really bothered you at all because, like like I said, that was so minuscule that really no one really picked up on it. So uh, you basically fought through the entire fight with the partially torn, you know, ligaments in your knee. That's pretty uh, badass. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he, I really thought my rib was broke in round two. He kicked me in the body, and that's what slowed me down in round two because I planned on picking up the pace more because that was Nate's first time to get out of the first round at uh, – at 125 so in the second and third round the game plan was to push the pace kick the leg more make him work more on the wrestling part but when he got me in the rib it slowed me down i literally i told my coach i was like i think he broke my rib and he was like well what do you want to do i'm like well i want to keep fighting obviously and, you know like he didn't break my rib thank goodness but i still feel like it's it's not the same rib anymore it feels different <laughs> Oh, damn. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's no good. But I mean, you got to take it this way, right? The odds were stacked against you ter in terms of like the betting odds, right? And many, many people believe that, you know, you would have suffered the same fate that you did in your previous two, you know, losses. But at the end of the day, you went in there and you gave it your all. You went the full 15 minutes, even with the odds stacked against you, even with all the injuries. So what, what, could you possibly take away from, you know, a, a fight like that? Well, I mean, obviously I'm glad that I didn't get finished. I mean, because I am the type of the guy it's killed or be killed out there. Uh, it's my first time in the UFC octagon to reach the a decision. Uh, so it, it, it felt good mentally to be able to actually experience going three, five minute rounds in the UFC. Um, but I have finishes in the UFC or in the octagon in round one, round two, and round three. So I can finish in every round, and everybody already knows that. I just, with all the experience and everything, I just wish I would have pushed more. You know, like, I just wanted to push the pace more. Uh, really want to show people that my cardio really is my strong aspect outside of my jiu-jitsu. I really love pushing the cardio and breaking these guys. And that's what I wanted to do to Nate. And honestly felt like if I – had two more rounds, we had more five round fights that I could have pushed the pace against these guys. Um, so, but all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited with my performance. Uh, I mean, obviously I did so good. They didn't re-sign him, you know? So, yeah, that that's why I wanted to kind of touch base on like, what are your thoughts on that? Right. I mean, he was, he's what uh six and two in the UFC. Right. And his only two losses were against like, pretty high level competitors two russians i think uh, i think it was tagir ulanbekov i'm not sure and um in umar namagabeno right I, yeah, I believe and he's got good wins like for example like when i picked uh tony gravel versus nate you called me out on it dude, and that was at 135 before nate even made it to 125 you're yeah. right, jimmy 
watch out for Nate, dude. And I was like, well, I think just Tony's going to out-wrestle him. Dude. Round one, Tony did great. Round two, yep. Nate slept him, dude, you know? Yeah. And, and I really started following Nate, you know? And he, he was 5-2 and two in the UFC with beating me. He had three bonuses, um, went to a decision with Umar. Um, he's only got submitted by um, that Russian at 125. Uh, like, the guy was a game opponent. But what people don't understand is, Y'all don't see what goes behind the doors, you know? No, nope, we, we don't. don't know what their management says. We don't know how their management reacts. I, mean, I don't know if he promotes the fights enough. Uh, one thing I was disappointed in is, like, the week before we fought, they were in Kentucky. I don't know if Nate's the only fighter out of Kentucky, but I'm very sure. I'm, I'm sure he's very few, one of very few out of the state of Kentucky. And I'm the one that had to rally to try to get us moved up a week. Like, I don't understand why him and his management didn't do that first. Like, I'm sitting here like, I'll come fight you in your backyard when you should have reached out to the UFC, I think, way before that when our fight was booked to try to make it happen. And right. uh, the UFC did contact me, from my understanding, with my manager. They were really interested into bumping us up to that Louisville card. Uh, but at the time when we asked, they did have 14 fights booked. And I believe all 14 fights went down in Louisville. So uh, that's why I was told we didn't get moved to the Louisville card. So, but I'm just telling people, we don't know what goes behind on behind scenes. We don't know if his manager's asking for more money. We don't know what the case was. So at, at the end of the day, I'm just glad I showed up and I did what I'm supposed to do. And that's entertain people. I promote the fight before, after, and I just love, I love my job and I'm glad this is what I get to do for a living. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's kind of weird, you know, like, it doesn't matter if you got, you're coming off a win, doesn't matter if you're coming off a loss, it could be your last fight regardless, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's not even just Nate, you know, Muhammad Makayev, he's undefeated, he was technically a top five fighter in the division, and he was getting canned, it's just, it's kind of odd to me, but at the end of the day, now with Contender Series, you know, they have, you know, 10 weeks of you know, 50 fighters that are basically fighting every single, you know, season. Um, they have a lot of these new guys coming in. And I want to know your thoughts on, you know, the contender series as a whole, because I know you, you know, you fought on there and you've gotten your work on there. But now, now that you're in the UFC, does, does that, is that more of a like uh, detriment to the guys that are already on the roster? Because now it kind of looks like some of these guys are really expendable because, now they could just go to the speeder of the contender series and just bring someone new on. And then you're just on, you know, you're just ready to go. We don't need you anymore type of thing. Exactly. And also like Nate would have been on his third contract. Well, what I've learned with the UFC, when we sign new contracts, they pay us better, you know? Right. So my Tuesday night contender contract, it, it was garbage yeah. uh, compared to the second contract. So for me to get this second contract and then I see the kind of money that I got the chance to make on my second contract, I'm like, hell yeah, you know, this is how we make it, you know. Well, Nate would have been on his third contract. The way I see it is they didn't want to pay him the money they need to pay him because he's on his third contract. Therefore, he's going to be making more money. And like you said, well, we can bring these new guys in on the Tuesday Night Contender that are hungry and then they're going to get locked into a four-fight deal on the lowest money that we offer and yeah. – we get to build them up and we build them up at a low amount of money and it either works out and then we give them that second contract or it doesn't work out and we bring more guys in. So it's a business and that's what the UFC is running. And then the thing on Makayev, I just, the guy ruined his, he ruined his career doing what he did against Cape. And then to go out there after all that drama y'all had and then just have a fight like that. I mean, and same thing with the money. He's supposed to be on like, that guy's probably making over 100 Gs a fight on one side uh, or 100 Gs to show, 100 Gs to win. So they're probably wanting close to half a million already, and the guy's not even fighting for a title. So right. I think that's a reason. If he would have went out there and fought the way he acted like he was going to fight, like in the freaking hotel and shit, then I think he would have kept his job. Yeah, the crazy part is I think he landed more fights in the in the hotel. I mean, more punches, punches. in the hotel than he did an actual fight. <laughs> exactly. And, and then he said, basically, he lied to Manel to take a picture why he could co cock Manel and hit Manel. And I think that's what really pissed the UFC off. 
Yeah, it's just it's just odd. I mean, like, especially those kind of scenarios, right? You guys are going to get locked in an actual cage where you can just handle it like men and then, you know, be done with it after that for you to go and try to sneak one on somebody, potentially lose the fight because, God forbid, if you, per you know, you hurt, actually hurt them. And then the UFC is like, yo, what are you, what are you doing? Now you just lo cost us a fight and a shit ton of money, you know? So, I mean, he did it to himself. Now he signed to, he's back to Brave FC. Supposedly yeah. they're paying him three times more monies. That's what the president says. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but here's I bet, here's I, I'm not going to say it's not true, but I bet he only fights once a year. True. That's what happened. That's what happened to PFL back in the day, dude. Them guys, they couldn't fight more than once or twice a year, dude. Our World Series of Fighting. That's why they turned yep. into PFL. Because World Series of Fighting couldn't do a show, but two to three shows a year because they were spending so much money on these guys. And it was just costing them so much. And they couldn't keep their fighters active. And that's hard on a fighter. And I Yeah, especially, especially you look at Bellator now, right? You know, Bellator, mm -hmm. you have fighters that are fighting maybe once or twice a year. Yeah, and the, no matter how much they're paying you, you know, us as fighters, man. It, like, even right now with me, I fought in January. I fought in June, you know, I was keeping the money going. Now, fuck, I don't know when I'm fighting, you know. So now I got to manage my money. I got to manage everything good. I got to bring my sponsorships back at a right time. I can't do it too soon. I can't do it too late. Don't know exactly when I'll get booked. It could be short notice. It could be another three-month camp. Like, and so it's a lot tougher. And I don't work for a living. This is what I do full time now. So uh, it is a lot tougher. But um, I'm just glad the UFC has been keeping me very active. And I think with the way I promote, the way I do interviews, the way uh, I promote myself is the reason why I still have a job in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, it's not just, you know, your ability to, you know, throw hands and be entertaining. You have to market yourself. You have to be, you know, you have to be a lot of things. You know what I mean? It's not just, you know, inside and outside of the cage. You have to market yourself as well as, you know, you also have to manage your money well. If you don't manage your money well, you're blowing through it really fast. And then you're going to have to get a second job. And then that kind of takes away from your training and, you know, takes away from your performances. It's it's a lot more than just going in there and fighting at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. You know? right. I hired a lawyer in my LLC. I have my own CPA, especially when I flew to Ca or flew to Canada. Canada took 15%. You had to file paperwork like freaking this thick just to be able to go to Canada as a business because I'm an LLC, um, Jimmy right. LLC. So uh, I've learned a lot over these years and, all you young guys coming up, man, if you see my interview, you see these other men interviews, you're fighting, you're training, you got sponsorship money, you need an LLC, a legal liability company. It keeps your money separate. Even if, let's say, you get in a relationship later on as you're successful, your LLC will protect you. It helps you, and especially on taxes. Uh, in 2020, when I fought and I won the $50,000 and all that, I didn't have an LLC. I just did it all with my regular job money and everything. I paid twenty two thousand dollars in taxes in twenty twenty. First time Holy crap. over hundred G's in my life, and because I didn't do everything right, Uncle Sam took every fucking penny he could. Yeah, man. A lot of people don't know that they really don't, and that's why, like you said, hire somebody that knows that. You know, it's 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 a different ball game. But like you said, a lot of these guys are hungry. They're up and coming. They don't they really know know the tricks of the trades until you really get in there and kind of, you know, live and learn type of thing. But the thing is, by then, sometimes, you know, three fights and then you're done and then you have nothing to show for it. Exactly. I think that's why more fighters uh, like say Anthony Showtime Perez and all these other guys, they're getting into opening up organizations. They're uh, managing fighters and stuff like that because they understand it. They know how we can help these fighters and build these fighters and also still keep our name out there. And I believe that's probably something I'll get into in the future. Uh, I would love to do some matchmaking. Uh, I've already do commentary and stuff. When I'm done fighting, I'm going to open my own gym. Uh, but Managing would be something I would really love to get into as well to help these fighters know how to market themselves and uh, really save themselves to get there a lot sooner 
it took me a long time to get there and that's why I'm 34 years old now in the UFC and I'm on the brink of my career right now too so this is like everything for me now and it could have been when I was 30 but now it's when I'm 34. Yeah I mean it is what it is right now at least you're in there you've done everything right you know, you, you, you have a, you know, a head on your shoulders, whereas other fighters really don't, especially the, the young fighters. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like moving forward in your career, you said, you know, you still got a long, you got a ways to go to get back to, you know, to health and get back to training. But what can, what can we expect for the rest of the, the year? Or do you, do you possibly see something at the end of the year when you're able to get back in there? Or do you see a potential early 2025? uh fight for you well since i have came back to the ufc i don't know if people notice uh i've had four fights since i came back to the ufc uh started in uh 2023 i fought in january and then i fought in june father's day weekend uh they know i'm a family man uh then we turned around and we fought in january we fought in june again so uh back to back i fought june or january and june so they've been keeping me on that about six months so i'm hoping if i can get cleared next month in september and get back to training i want to rally to get on something in december i would like to fight before the end of the year to have three fights before the end of the year and then i would have two fights left on my contract uh going into 2025 so but if I don't get to fight before the end of the year, you know, once I'm get back to training, uh, I'm gonna be back competing in jujitsu again. The UFC did give me the clearance where I can do jujitsu matches. I flew out to Savannah, Georgia, and grappled that uh, world champ and went to a draw. Um, so I love competing. I want to do more jujitsu, and then I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, 5Ks, 10Ks, 15Ks, and I love running. So I'm ready to get back to running. And uh, the plan is I really want to do like a triathlon. I would like to run, ride, bike. Uh, like I said, I, I love the cardio aspect. And that's really w where I feel like it can shine in these fights. I just really need to tune in with everything. My, my, that last fight was great. Like I said, outside of the few injuries I took that I think that slowed me down. But um, I think I'm a whole new fighter, you know, but I just need to get it to the ground a lot more. Like that Von Flu choke has been there. Flick, it's 20 seconds in the last two fights, and I'm going to get it one fight in the UFC eventually, but I just need to get back to my grind, and uh, I'm just hopefully fighting in December. I really want to fight in December. I think that'd be great, but if not early next year for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're you're so close to getting that uh, Von Flick choke, you know, going on there. That was – uh. That's always one of your, your go-tos and pretty damn good at that. But, uh, well, at the end of the year, twenty uh, in, in December, the last fight card is actually in Tampa Bay, Tampa yeah. here down in Florida. And they're still building that card. So maybe, just maybe, you could well, campaign for yourself to get on there. Yeah, and then I'm going to be on standby. That's what sucks, though. You know, the UFC, I, I'm not cleared yet, and the UFC knows Okay. That. So there's no negotiation until I'm cleared. Not yet. Oh, gotcha. So uh, I, I have physical therapy a couple more weeks of that I'm hoping once I'm that then I go see the P, my primary care and then hopefully we'll be good from there and uh, get back to training and I don't know I'm excited man especially after the last fight I felt like my performance could have been better but it was it, it was a good performance I really showed people that my stand-ups better than they think I can take a lot more and um I'm excited to get back in there and see who the UFC matches me with. Like you said, there's a lot of fighters coming up. And, I mean, I'll throw this out there. I know you didn't get signed by the UFC yet, but I would love the Nick Pinchini. I probably can't pronounce his right name right. No disrespect to Nick or anything like that. But the thing is, is Nick is an OSU wrestler. I grew up in my whole life wrestling in Oklahoma. Unfortunately, I messed my life up at a young age and I wasn't able to pursue my career as an actual collegiate wrestler. And I found Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at 17 and it took over from there. So a high class wrestler like that, he stepped up on 10 days notice, fought a guy like Duffy and he got the decision. I know it was a split. I think, yes, it could have went either way. Uh, I do agree with Dana giving him a rematch, but I think if they do rematch and he actually has a fight camp, 
I think he will uh, get the unanimous decision win. I don't know if he can find the submission over Duffy. Uh, Duffy was – he was scrappy. Uh, but what I'm saying is I would love to fight an All-American wrestler versus an All-American jiu-jitsu guy. Like, so um, – Nick Pennicini, I ain't got no disrespect for you. I'd be watching you, dude. So if you do make it to the UFC, dude, throw my name out there. I think it'd be a great match, and Oklahoma would love it. Dude, that would be a great fight. You and Nick Pennicini, that's bro. That would that would be a great scrap because, like you said, to uh, contrast the styles, right? His D1 All American Wrestling and your high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu block them crashing in there be that'd be great and he did look good you know 10 10 days notice um obviously his gas tank wasn't there but you know that's kind of expected when you're having to wrestle and grapple and scramble for 15 minutes on such short notice against another high level black belt in in jack duffy mind you i do think duffy should have gotten uh awarded that you know that win but neither here nor there now both of them get to fight full fight you know full camp and uh, that's going to be interesting to see in the, the last last episode of uh, this year's Contender Series. But, yeah, yeah man, um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you get back in there, you know, any which way possible. And, um, but yeah, I'm just going to end it on the high note. Um, I appreciate you, you know, uh, coming in here on, on a Sunday, Labor Day weekend, getting some time in here to talk about, you know, what's going on with you and how things are going. And, um, you know, before we head out, if you want to shout out any of your sponsors or let anybody know what you got going on soon, let everybody know. Well, hopefully we'll be back to, uh, back to training in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is the first time since I've got back to fighting that I've actually had a few thought or a few, or a few months off. Uh, it's been about two months. Uh, I'm actually still in shape. I'm actually walking around smaller now than I was when I was in fight camp, which is kind of weird. Uh, for Nate, I, I walked around between 152 and 155. Uh, I made the cut about two and a half weeks out. Uh, I wanted to be big like Nate. Uh, so um, it was a lot bigger weight cut. Um, so now my body, I'm walking around now, not even training at 152, 150. So my body's kind of settling now as I'm getting older. So I'm hoping when I get back to training, it helps with the weight cut and everything. And uh, hopefully my body's finally adapting at this age to making that cut. So, and then I'll give love to my sponsors for the support. They always jump back on board. I know they'll jump back on board for this next fight, hopefully before the end of the year. Shout out to Harvest Health Dispensary, GG2 Sports and Card Show, The Parlor Hair and Ink, Vista Pools and Outdoor Living, uh, Tulsa Sport Acupuncture, MAJ Mafia, Inkwell Printing, Minuteman Plumbing of Tulsa, Palmer Law, Industrial Motor Services, International Crematory Services, Broadway Barbershop, HKA USA, and my gym, Forza Combat Sports and Broken Arrow. And also my boy, Micah Stockton. He's my insurance broker, my jiu-jitsu coach, my training partner, and my friend. So if it wasn't for all my sponsors and everybody that supported me, I wouldn't be able to do this for a living. Appreciate y'all. Follow me on Instagram at The Brick MMA. I'm on TikTok at The Brick MMA. I'm on X at Jimmy Flick and then Jimmy the Brick Flick on uh, my fan page. All right, man. Appreciate your time. Hope you have a good one and enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, big dog. Later. Later.